So it's been about three months since I built my very own gaming PC for the first time. And I wanna do a little review on it, give you guys my thoughts. And fun little fact, I brought a PS5 for a friend and the RTX 3090 at the same time, same place. I don't know, I just got lucky around that time. Now, I didn't really want the graphics card because it was just so much money, but somewhere down the line, I wanted to build a PC. And I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't expecting the transaction to really go through and it went through. So I gave my friend the PS5 and then I just had the RTX 3090 just laying around. And that's why you guys saw that unboxing video, but I didn't have anything to build it on. Down the line, one to two months later, that's when I decided to buy some PC parts. The PC market is just full of scalpers. I ended up buying the Ryzen 9 5900X off of eBay for $700. I just had to, because AMD was just wasn't making enough Ryzen 9s. It was a lot of Ryzen 3s. I ended up buying that, but then I ended up returning it because I want something more powerful with the 3090. Now, a site that helped me through the process was PCPartPicker.com. That's going to allow you to make a list of all your parts that you picked up or you're willing to buy, and it's going to spot any compatibility issues, give you some warnings. And I also got a shout out to Khalifa. He helped me through. He's a subscriber on the channel, so salute to him. But I also gotta thank YouTube, Linus Tech Tips, Austin Evans, just to name a few. You know, YouTube is your best friend when it comes down to building your PC. The first game I played was Grand Theft Auto V, actually. And a lot of people roast me because I was only playing the game at 60. This is only a 60 hertz panel. This is the ultra wide from LG. And that was the only monitor I had at the time because I was still waiting on this monitor to go in stock. This was just so incredibly hard to find. Like I said, the PC market is just nuts right now. Um, this is the LG Ultra Gear. It does 4K, 144 hertz. I forgot the model number, but I'm gonna throw it on screen. But this is the one without the HDMI 2.0 one support and LG actually came out with a new model to support HDMI 2.1 for the PS5 and Xbox Series X so 4k 120 you could be able to do so on that newer model which costs hundred dollars so bring the price up to 899 this was only 799 but nonetheless the screen is jaw dropping I made a full-blown review video on it oh man I was trying to decide on which monitor should I get should I get a 4K 144 hertz or should I get a 1440p at 240 hertz? You don't want to literally throw out your money by underpowering the system. You know, you pay for this beast, unleash it. I'm waiting for that Frozen Horizon 5. Man, that game is so sick according to the demos and stuff. Imagine playing that on PC. And I even play games like Battlefield, you know, at ultra settings while keeping the frame steady. I haven't really downloaded that much games because I feel like I limited myself by getting a one terabyte uh, NVMe SSD. I should've went with the two terabyte because I could store so many more games. I understand you're getting the performance and having that capacity, they're, they're gonna have to jack up that price. Now, I try to get some work done. I installed Photoshop and Premiere, but one thing with me and video editing, I've been using Final Cut Pro on the Mac for like 10 years. 10 years has been. So me transitioning to a new editing software, I just don't have time to be learning a new editing software. Um, it's not that hard to edit on Premiere, but I have all of my plugins, I have all of my stuff, my presets, but I happen to try video editing on this PC and it's just as fast as my MacBook. But the MacBook has a slight advantage because it's a little bit faster thanks to Apple's optimization to Final Cut Pro. I love PC and I love Mac OS too. They both have their pros and they both have their cons. And I actually don't wanna get into it, Mac versus PC. But one thing that's pretty cool, I can get AirDrop to work on my PC. I use this site called snapdrop.net. It works like a charm. I could be able to AirDrop from my Mac to my Windows or my iPhone to Windows. That's one thing that Microsoft or Windows, I should say, they always had that advantage when it comes down to multitasking. It's just so much easier to snap Windows side by side any orientation that you like or resizing the windows um, compared to mac os it just doesn't compete there's more things that's compatible with windows than mac os i feel like so i think that's a fact for example i could be able to get these cool wallpapers on my pc i use wallpaper engine from the steam store that's literally the first thing i purchased right when i built my pc you can't get that on mac os like i'm coming from windows vista that was my last windows operating system we had blue screens, automatic shutdowns, and I just, 
it was just a nightmare. It just left a bad taste in my mouth, essentially. But so far, Windows 10 has been smooth as butter. I don't even have a security software installed on my computer, although I do have malware bytes, but I don't have anything like Norton or Avast. And with the release of Windows 11, I'm curious to see what direction Microsoft is gonna take. And yes, I saw the leaks, I saw the videos, the ISO has been leaked, you can download it right now. All right, so Microsoft just concluded their Windows 11 event, and I gotta say, it's just basically the same thing as Windows 10, but just a fresh coat of paint. The UI looks slightly tweaked, look, look a little bit more modern, away from the boxes, on with the curves, um, but overall, it's just bringing refinements, speed, and security to Windows. But nonetheless, it's still interesting to see a new version of Windows. Now, one thing that is just boggles my mind my pc cannot run windows 11 this is insane i'm sure it's just a bug on the app or the browser or whatever compatibility issues that could be a thing but hey i know my pc is powerful enough to run it and i don't know about you guys it's always exciting to see new versions of windows because i grew up on windows windows 98 being my first operating system that i ever used windows xp that's like my whole entire childhood right there and then we transitioned to Windows Vista in 09. That's when we switched over to Mac OS with Snow Leopard and the rest was just history. I always been a Mac guy since 09. And then yeah, here we are in 2021 over to Windows 10 yet again. And I gotta say, it's certainly good to be back from gaming, from live streaming, big day and night difference. I cannot even live stream on the Mac OS. Unless you're just doing conferences when you just want to put it out on the web, you can do that. But when it comes down to streaming video games, Windows, they got it. That's period. OBS is so much better. The thing is with OBS on the Mac, you, there's like a lot of loopholes that you got to get past to accomplish it. And when it comes down to consoles, there's really no competition. PC is on the league of its own. Um, and that's why when I did my PS5 versus Xbox comparison, I didn't even bother to mention the PC because it is better. But the reason why people always go to consoles is because it's more affordable than PC. Because let's face it, the graphics card alone, it, it costs more than both the PS5 and Xbox combined. So that pretty much concludes today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you guys did, I appreciate it with a thumbs up. Comment down below what you guys think. And make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on. Wow, I am so hungry. I gotta get some seafood. <laughs>